All right, so now that we're building out the content, we should start actually creating the emails themselves. So now let me show you how to create an email that you would use with the system. So we're going to go to the upper right hand corner and click on the menu and go down to contacts settings. From contact settings over on the left hand side, we're going to click on the email and phone scripts option. Now, depending on how you got set up in the system, you may have some stuff in the My Content section that was copied into your account by creating a new account. Or you may have content that's in the System Content section, which would allow you to use the content or copy the content, but not edit the content. On this training, though, we're actually going to focus on creating a new one-touch email to help you understand how simple it is to create emails that you can use within the system. So I'm going to click on the Add One-Touch Email button. That'll take me to the Add a New One Touch Email page where I can start to create the email. Now it's super easy to do this, and we're gonna just start at the top and work our way down. And the first option here is the Contact Folder section. This section here allows you to select specific folders that you may want to assign to this specific email that you're creating. Now keep in mind, when you're making dials through the system, it doesn't matter what you select as the contact folder. This only matters if you're trying to send an email from a contact through the contact manager. This setting allows you to limit the emails that show up when you're looking at specific contacts based off the folder the contact is in. Helps to keep the clutter down. In this particular case, I'm going to leave it set to all folders, and we'll move on to the next option, which is the one-touch email name. I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. The one-touch email name is for our eyes only. We do not share or show that name to the contacts. The next option is a one-touch email description. Once again, this is for your eyes only. You and or your team will be the only ones who see the description. Completely up to you whether or not you want to put in a description. However, you'll find that a lot of times your name is usually going to be descriptive enough and you don't need to worry about entering a description. Now the next option is the actual subject line. The subject line is something that your contacts are going to see. So you're going to want to put a little bit of thought into this. You're going to want to make sure that it's clever enough or catchy enough to get them to actually open the email. Now, in the case of this specific email that I'm creating, I'm only going to be sending this to somebody who I've actually had a conversation with. So I want to use a subject line that they're going to be able to recognize. And I'd also want to tell them what the subject line would be when I'm talking to them. Now, sometimes when you create a subject line, you may also want to personalize it. Maybe insert the contact's name in the subject line or their phone number or any other type of information that's specific to that contact. And you can do that using personalization codes. So if we click on the codes button over on the right hand side, we can insert the recipient's name. Now keep in mind the system is not going to automatically insert extra spaces or commas or periods or anything like that when you insert somebody's name or their phone number or anything. So if you feel like you need to format something to make it look right, make sure you add that before or after the code that you're inserting into the subject line. Now let's jump down to the actual message. So the message is the actual body of the email that we're going to be sending to our contacts. I'm not going to go into detail on every little option here, but I do want to help you understand what you have available here when you're creating an email. This right here is your formatting bar. This allows you to change all kinds of different options within your emails, such as the font, the size of the text, the color of the text, the background of the text, bold, italics, underline, whether or not you want bullets or anything like that, left justified, centered, or right justified. And then a really popular option is this one right here, which is the insert image. You can upload an image from your computer, you can choose any images you've uploaded previously, which I haven't on this specific account, or you can insert a link to a specific image. If you have the direct URL to that image, you can add that here to insert an image. I'm not going to do that just yet, so I'm going to cancel. Now over on the far right hand side, there are four icons. These icons contain some important pieces to building out emails. The first one are your codes, your personalization codes. If you want to personalize your email, like inserting the contact's first name at the beginning of the email, you would use these codes here. So there I did. I just entered the contact's first name. I add a comma, and then I hit Enter, and now I have a new paragraph. You can insert the sender's information. This becomes really important if you're part of a team and you're building emails for that team. So you want to create one email that everybody's going to use, 
but you want to make sure that the information, the sender's information is specific to the rep who's sending the email. Any social media options will be available to insert into the email. Custom links like confirming their email address or personalization codes. And then of course, any custom field that you've created on your account. All can be used to personalize the email that you're sending to your contacts. The next option is the ability to insert a signature. Now I'm not ready to insert a signature yet, so we'll come back to this in just a moment. The next option is the smart sender, the ability to insert smart sender resources or packs into your email. So we'll do that here in just a minute as well. And the last option here is the option to insert a link. So let's build out an email real quick. Now let's go ahead and insert our PDF. That's it. Now let's go ahead and close out our email. And I'm going to insert a signature so that I can have a nice professional close to my email for myself and my team when this email is sent. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and save changes. I can preview it. Isn't that a nice email? So we have now created our first OneTouch email. I'd recommend that you take a moment now and go and create at least one OneTouch email yourself to start getting familiar with how to do that. Once you've done that, let's move on to the next step.